Hello, welcome. My name is Manuel from Qatar Studio. So you're going to learn how to convert an image or a raster file to a vector-based element. So vector-based element is element you can edit or modify independently layer by layer. Okay. So to give you a contrast of this, Photoshop is a raster design tool while Illustrator is a vector design tool. Correct draw. I think that could be raster and vector at the same time. Affinity Designer is a vector design tool, but in most cases, you can also use part of it for raster purposes. So for instance, we have this raster file. As you can see, the file name here is .jpg. Look at it very closely, .jpg. And by the way, you want to learn how to make your file extension name show. Like as you can hear from, see from here, mine is showing. If I go to Photoshop, it's show .psd. If I go to video issues mp4 and it's easier for me to detect what file i'm actually working on to do that open your uh drive area by clicking on windows and e windows in your keyboard and e at the same time then you're going to see this option that says view click on that option then click on this box over here then click on view scroll down until you find this option view extension for known file type so this particular one you must make sure it is unticked watch what happens when we tick it when we tick it we will apply this we'll get we will see that we lost all five extensions available for us from here. So when we untick that and save it, it refreshes and we have the file extension. So it's easier now to know that this is actually PDF, even though we don't have the visual representation of that particular file type. So that's by the way. Now, this is it. If you're actually working on this in a raster element, you can actually change the colors of these elements independently. No, dependently, I mean. So we select on the color we want to pick on. We want to pick on purple, select on this, and we want to change this image. We have to click on this option, right click on it. You can see all other options available. But if you have selected one option, it's going to show there. So we are picking on the, the paint uh, buckets. So we paint on this lady's face and we have the pink from over there. Now, what if we want to make this, this pink on this lady's face a gradient? We can't because this is a raster file and we are just placing colors above the element. And why it is very easy for you to detect the colors because these colors are separated by their contrasts. What I mean by that is if we hit on the light space we have from here, it will apply this color all over the background. Why? Because it only recognizes, not the element, it recognizes everything in between. Okay, so it's not advisable you use this particular formula to make whatever you want to make, especially when you want to work on files like this. So we are going to be learning how we can do that with Adobe Illustrator. So we can get the files separately and we can work on those elements independently so we create a layout you can create a layout of any size and by the way i have a tutorial on sizing for illustrator where i teach you where you should use a higher sizing for your design and where you should use a lower size on design check on the playlist illustrator for beginners now we hit on ok so that we can start doing this right away next thing you need to do is to drag in the element or image elements to illustrator drag it in here perfect you see illustrator is accumulating too much of space for us you can either reduce the size if you want or continue with what you are doing right now okay so want to continue with what you are doing you hit on control minus in your keyboard it will reduce or contrast the content but then it's not contrasting it based off on the art board we have created it's contrasting it based on the universe of illustrator what i mean by universe is the space that is unending okay so now um Back to this, if you want to contrast it based on the ele element uh, space we have created, the Canva we have created for the artboard, all you need to do is to hold the shift key in your keyboard and go to the edge and drag it until it becomes the size you want. You can now toss it into the area you want it to be. But first, I want to do this in an empty space so I can then pull in my files in this area. So we have the first stage. The second stage is to find a tool which we use in doing this. The tool we use in doing this is called image uh, trace. I am not going to show you how easy it is for me to get it from here because you might not you might not find it here. Okay, but if you want to find it, you can also click this option at the top right corner and make sure you select on essential classics. You should be able to see that option from the properties panel. But if you don't, make sure you go to windows and scroll down till you find the image trace. So when you hit on image trace, you have the option from over here. So now let's continue what we are doing. So this is what you're going to do. If you hit outside, you're not going to see any option. When you select on image, you're going to see the option to edit. So whenever you drop the image trace, make sure you hit outside and then select the element you want to actually work on. Because 
any element you select before you drop the image tracing will not apply to the image tracing. It's only element that you select after you drop the image tracing that is going to apply the settings for the image tracing. First settings we need to do here, preset, leave preset at six colors okay why we want to choose six colors is if you look close to this image we see that we have more color options here sorry about that it's going to actually populate those information to the image trace element so give it a little time and we are good to go so what it just did now what just happened now is that it actually rendered this particular image to actually figure out the six colors that are available here now this may not be six colors. this means that we have less than six color for this particular layer we want to actually trace so you have yellow we have red black we have uh black this should be green and so on and so forth i think this is just four colors we have from here forget about the background color we are going to deal with that in a couple of moments so the tracing result what tracing result would you want just leave it at the tracing result as default okay the color leave it at color don't use grayscale okay palette option we want it to be limited leave it at limited if you put full tune that is in cases where you have gradients in this particular element if you have some gradient colors you can use full tune but if you don't leave it at limited so you don't confuse the uh, system now the colors we already have it as cc you can also increase or decrease it from here in advance what you need to do here is just one option which is ignore white make sure you set that option also so if there is any white element you can ignore it so it doesn't create uh layers for that after that, make sure you enable the preview and then you can go over here. From here, you can click on expand. That's all you need to do. Hit on expand. Then we'll give it a little while. I've expanded the file very, very quickly. Some people, it might take time to expand because the system you're using, the processor, it might be very slow. So you have to just be patient. And this also determ is determined by the the amount of image or the amount of layer we created make sure any layer you're creating in illustrator is not more than 1000 pixels let's proceed now we have the element already created or the already traced not created it's already traced we can do away with this we don't need this anymore for now okay so next thing you need to do is to click on on group over here click on on group so that i can ungroup all these elements so you can select them separately Right now we can select them separately everything is grouped in together but watch if i select on the direct selection tool i'll be able to select elements singularly okay so we need to ungroup all of the elements so select everything select everything i hit on ungroup and right now everything is ungrouped so now we click outside and then we we can separate the background from the main element as you can see we have the main element and we have the background so we can now select this element itself and we can apply the say a different color to this one and a different color to another one all of these things can have different color i can select this one select this one select this one all those the three red i selected we are going to convert it to purple leaving the rest now somebody might be saying ah this is something we did in photoshop let me show you what makes it different now we select on this we go to the uh, gradient area we can select on the basic gradient which is this one you see we can now apply gradient to our work let's use the picker and pick on purple and also use the picker and pick on red you see we have red and purple which is a very bad contrast uh, relationship it's very bad contrast relationship, which will always divorce I like this uh, lights orange and the other shade of orange this is also cool but we can further style it by what adjusting the layouts to make sure it makes sense so you can do the same thing applying the same effect let's just change this to gold i think that makes sense let's do it let's make a gold from there so to make a gold select on the color palette and select on this part here we're going to select the light yellow and we're going to select another lighter yellow okay that's how we make gold we just have gold so that's a good color over there we can use this particular element which is called the gradient element to now adjust it to the way we want make our gold to feel like a gold now when you look closely you see some rough rough edges these are edges which you can manipulate now to customize it to what you want you see it have its own anchor point you have to now start customize these things are now left for you to delete the ones you don't want and leave the ones that you want you see you can delete them one after the other or you can deal with them as you want depending on how you want just adjust those edges for instance i can select on this part and i will adjust it to be larger 
or delete. Select on this again. Let me select on this one. You see, I can adjust this and cover up that space. You can do just anything. This one is just minor, minor things that you need to just fix. Like I told you before, the ladies back neck side, we may select on this and then we select on that layer. You see, there are too many anchor points because this actually created and rendered too many points to actually get exactly what we are looking for. So you may need to go through the process of deleting as many anchor points. So if you have a few anchor points, that is only when you can now adjust. You can't adjust when you have too many anchor points. See what is going on. So we need to delete many anchor points here so that we'll be able to edit. That is just the issue you are going to be finding in this one. But if you want to reduce that, you can actually reduce, I think there's an option to do something like that. This man have a hunchback. Okay, I can't even find that option. There's an option to actually make this. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Simplify, let me see. I think simplify makes that work. So simplify will reduce the anchor points we have available. So we reduce the simplify level to this let's see if it's actually ready let's reduce it very very well for practice sake let's see if it deals with that five okay so let's see if it treats our anchor point let's select our anchor point again let's go close and see if it treats our anchor point areas wow it did it so we now have fewer anchor points as you can see we can now delete as many as few anchor points then we can now control the anchor point as we have you see it's now easier it's now very, very easier. Then for that, we can now reduce this one, select on all of these elements and delete all of them at the same time. Just select on all of these, delete them. This is just how to edit it, okay? Once you are done with any layer, you see that there are too many anchor points available, though, uh, as you can see from here, let me show you. As you can see, we have too many anchor points and we can't even adjust here. All you need to do is click option and simplify it we reduce the anchor point availability. What's wrong with you? Simplify. Uh oh, that actually show. That actually show because we can't do that while we are actually selecting the anchor points. So let's do it again. Here is that option and simplify. Fine. So now we are going to reduce it very well watch the edge of those particular blue lines that we have from there let me zoom a little bit closer uh, this too close very good look at the lines we have from the edge of those elements you see it have reduced it tremendously if you remove it totally you see it will remove almost all the anchor points but look at what it does it makes the edges of this element look as if it is curved this is not how it is so simplifying means reduce it to the minimal anchor point anchor point helps elements to be more erect and specific so when you reduce anchor point or reduce simplify it you are reducing the amount of anchor point allowing the vector element to be smoother but then losing its shape in most cases so this is simply how to do that when you're done you can now play around with the rest of the things but there are cases where this may not work. So let's try out this particular image. So we want to do this with a real life image. Let's see if this applies to real life images. So you're going to see it right in front of us. So I already teach you how to do it. So let me do it very quickly from here. So we click on image trace. Wow. Expand on group. Wow. Can only catch some part of the woman's face. What's going on here? <laughs> can see her teeth from here. Can you see it? So, the, so these, these are the ones. <laughs> God, it doesn't look good. So it can't actually pick the colors, okay? So when you are actually making your image trace, you make sure you do it on vector elements or elements that have definite colors. If it doesn't have definite colors, you will run into issues of it converting the element to something that looks so ghostly. So that is it for today's tutorial. Very quickly on Illustrator. If you have any question, drop that in the comment section below. If you are not subscribed yet, do that right away. And by the way, when we are coming into this, you saw this website, very beautiful, right? We make websites that shines. If you want to check, check, check this out, you can go to shopstation.ng to check out their new layout. We just updated their layout today and it makes more sense. This is not what you'll be experiencing in mobile breakpoint. The hero section actually is different from one in mobile. So check it out. 
If you like it, if you have your uncle, your brothers, your nephew, your friend, anyone who needs a website, just point them to katastudios.com. You're welcome.